Good evening, good evening. We are here with Pastor Jay and Evangelist Lavina. We're here tonight to uh, try to tear apart strongholds. Amen, strong H-O-L-D-S, amen. And we hear so much about it. Um, so I will be trying to study it so we can complete it in, on a small booklet. Help me to complete a small booklet. So she's uh, always willing to help me, always, and no matter what I call, she she comes on and, and helps me out. So I'm gonna ask her a question. I'm not gonna let her do all the talking tonight, but what do you consider as a stronghold? A stronghold is anything that takes hold of your mind, that pulls your mind away uh, from God, from anything godly. It's something that tries to consume you and something that tries to hold you, no matter whether you try to pull away or uh, it, it tries to take a hold on you. Okay, so it has to do with uh, a connection with the person. Does the person make a connection with that person? Uh, does it uh, has anything to do with the bloodline or is it just something that they that just have, just something that they do? The they make, soul tie or the stronghold? Stronghold. The stronghold it doesn't necessarily have it doesn't necessarily have to be a connection mm -hmm. it's the enemy and he'll you know he'll try to get in any way he can to okay. get a foothold in okay. your life okay so okay. yeah it doesn't necessarily have to be a connection but it certainly could okay okay so let's go to the uh second timothy two and four i think i got that scripture here Second, we're just going to relax and it's going to be an evening of a couple of minutes, 15 or 20 minutes. I don't want to keep her too long for our family. Second Timothy 2 and 4. It said, No man that wars entangle himself with affairs of this life, that he may place them who has chosen him to be a soldier. Is that on the right scripture? Mm -hmm, that's it. Okay. So that part to come unto the knowledge of the truth, <laughs> come to the knowledge of the truth. Okay, I think I'm reading the same, the right one, Second Timothy, chapter two, verse four. What yours read like? Yeah, it's the same. Okay, it's so. Just a, mm -hmm. So you can get Second Corinthians ten and four. Second okay. Scripture, please. Okay. So we examined the strongholds uh, operating in Peter and John when they were confronted by religious leaders. So we're trying to see where did, we know it started in the Bible, but we're trying to help ourselves tonight. Amen. You want me to read that? Read that one. Okay. Yes. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Okay, so strongholds are wrong thoughts and belief about God that have been emotionally haywired into our minds that hinder. I just summed up what you told me, amen. So that's what it is, just some in our mind that, that hinders us. So strongholds are lies, right? That have been ingrained so deeply into our minds and belief system that we believe they are true. So in other words, Someone tell you something from who it comes from, you think it's true, but it may not be true. <laughs> yeah. So the lies. Yeah. Right. Okay. And sometimes people try to entangle you with a lie to keep mm -hmm. you connected to them. So in a way, that's the connection as well. Okay. People will try to lie you, keep you connected to them to keep your mind. A lot of times, uh, people who may not have a weak mind may be weak with somebody else. With that person. You know. mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So give me verse five. Verse five says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Read it again. One more time. Hallelujah. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So 2 Corinthians 10 and 10 and 5 tell us to uh, 
how Paul, this is how Paul describes it. So he is saying we must cast down imaginations, imaginations, mm -hmm. and every high thing. <laughs> he said mm -hmm. strongholds are uh, imagination and every, he said, every, not just a few, every high thing. So what do you mm -hmm. consider as imagination and a high thing? Imagination is something that's weighing heavy on your mind. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when the enemy tries to play with my mind and, you know, tell me that I'm not this and I'm not that and I can't do this and I can't do that. When the attacks begin to come, I think about this scripture and this is where I go. Okay. And, and, and I take those thoughts half captive. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Christ said it's for um, passing down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity yeah. to the obedience of Christ. So I have to bring those thoughts in the captivity and, and I cast <laughs> them down because okay. I know what Jesus Christ said about me. Okay. So I'll go back up to verse three. Verse three says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. So we walk in the flesh. <laughs> so we do not war with the flesh. So the flesh can have its way, right? <laughs> right. The flesh desires to have its way. Yeah, desires, that's right. that's right. We have to cast our flesh down too. <laughs> we have to kill out our flesh as well. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> this is getting good. So Paul is saying that um, a person falsely pulling down, that's what you're telling me, and demolishing the lies and wrong belief that have been elevated above the truth of God. So you're able to put all of that into captivity. But you got to yeah. have what? The power of God to put it in captivity. Right. <laughs> oh, Amen. hallelujah. Amen. hallelujah. We have to walk in our authority okay. in Christ because he's given us authority. <laughs> All and right. so we just have to know the word and, and rightly divide it and rightly apply it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So how do we deal with the beliefs that are not true when it comes to God? How do we deal with the beliefs that are yeah, not I say true? again, okay. I say again, this is what I go to. That's, That's how earth. I deal with them. Because a lot of times, you know, uh, some of the battles that the enemy tries to bring upon me were things that I dealt with in my younger years. Mm -hmm. And he tries to bring them back. I, I speak a lot about uh, in my past feeling insignificant, mm -hmm. feeling very low. Like I was, you know, like okay. the lowest one on the totem pole. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, that's how I felt. But okay. I know that that's not true. I know my identity in Christ now. So when the enemy tries to bring those thoughts on me now, mm -hmm. I go to the scripture. Okay. I can't tell when you unmute it now. <laughs> I'm okay. sorry, I got a ring. I didn't hear you. Okay. So I heard what you said. So we must demolish the untruth by imposing God truth on them. And we do do this by creating new strongholds in our mind based on God truth. Take the lies and do the truth by you said in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. So in other mm -hmm. words, I if I if not able to take and put it to cast down imagination and every high thing, so I need to have some, if I can't do that, that means that I need to work with that, right? I need to work with that. Right. And me as me myself, when I first started out preaching, they would say that I couldn't be a pastor because I had children. And they made me feel like I was down here, but actually in my mind in Christ Jesus, I was up here. So they thought maybe they was taking me down, but they actually was building me up. Amen. Hallelujah. So I had to know who I was and whose I was and actually to, 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 to uh, do that. That's right. And when I begin to feel those, when he begins to bring those thoughts to my mind, uh, I, say, uh, I say about myself what God says about me. I go to the word and I say to myself what God says about me. I have to remind myself <laughs> who I am in Christ. Yeah. Because it's, and and it's, we'll do it we'll daily. We just can't do it daily. We go to church on Sunday. We got to do it yeah, every morning. Every morning I get up in my mirror, I might be 12, 1 o'clock when I get up and when I go to work. I say, I am who I am and That's I am right. who God says I am. And That's no matter right. what I come through today, Lord, you hold me. I have to have self control on this little member. Amen. Because sometimes mm -hmm. they catch us as Christians, they catch us off guard. 
So yeah. when you go in, you have to pray that you know to be, you know, to be, to be all you can be because sometimes those they are waiting just to just to make you, you know, feel like you're not anybody. So That's let's right. go to uh, Acts, um, Acts hmm, three. I did a little study in Acts 3. <laughs> Let's pick up in verse 2 and read down to verse 8, if you if you if you may. Okay. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which mm -hmm. is called beautiful, mm -hmm. to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple walking and leaping and praising God. So Peter and John were just going to the temple. Here we go. Just going yeah. to the temple to what? Pray. Yeah. He just man been a it's a daily day. He didn't say that day, but it said and this man laying to his mother womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate. So everybody right. else saw this man laying in every day. Amen. And now yeah. Hickam Hickam the two Hickam two Christians two yeah. that know the Lord stop and, and ask them, we don't have nothing. So do you see what's happening? Can you imagine the commotion that, 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 that he caused? You, can you imagine the emotion, commotion that he caused? Because he is he asked them because they stopped. They was on yeah. their way to pray. <laughs> right. And I see here that, that they were ready. They were ready. <laughs> and the Bible says we well, got to be ready. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. and, and I try my best not to uh, pass church going to church. You know, I try not to pass up ministry going mm -hmm. to feed myself. Mm -hmm. and, and when people call me and they need prayer or something, like someone called me Sunday and I was getting ready for church. And I was yeah. still getting ready while I was talking. But I had to remember that ministry, that was ministry right there. Okay. So, mm -hmm. That was I ministry. Like that. I like that. I like the idea. You don't pass up ministry to get the ministry. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but the people yeah. who come and walk past them every day for years and now walking and leaping. Yeah. Can you say can can you say Ronnie? And he praising yeah, God he on top of his long while. And then that, that power of Jesus was fully displayed, ladies and gentlemen, simply because Peter said, What I have inside of me, a life that a power to bring the miraculous, I'm going to share it with you. So sometimes, like you just said, you just took the words out of my mouth. Sometimes we get up there and preach and then sometimes I feel like something is missing. I've just passed the ministry on my way so I won't be late for church. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Oh, and, and really, they said silver and gold have I none. They gave him the greatest gift that they could have ever given him. <laughs> Amen. So, they gave so him that gift lesson, of Jesus. Sunday school lesson was talking about how is a poor, too poor to give. I knew that they was poor, but they still gave him something. That's when they said, That's right. they said, Silver and gold have I none. Yeah. I have, you can have. <laughs> That's right. And he could get up and go to work and get his silver and gold. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. Oh, okay. Hallelujah. Let's go to another story. Uh, hmm. Let's see. Hmm. So Peter heals the lame man. It opened the door to him to deliver one of the most powerful messages in the entire New Testament. So let's pick this one up. This uh, in Acts chapter four. It's verse one and two. And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees <laughs> came upon them being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Keep going. Keep going. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day, 
for it was now eventide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. Amen. <laughs> so, the, so not only was the people mad in the temple, but here come the, here come the, hallelujah. It says the priest, it said he spoke to the people and the captain of the temple, and the yeah. Sadducees came up on them. So I mean, all did all does all those come up on them, but the Sadducees came up on them, being grieved that they that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead, and they laid hands on them and put them out to, in hold to the next day, for it was not evening. And then it said, how many was was added? Five thousand. Five thousand. <laughs> Amen. So Amen. they wasn't worried about about them being put in jail. Come on, he going to preach the word anyway. They wouldn't have that. Oh, what you want to say about that one? Amen. They they were ready. They were preaching at all times. That's what I love about X. They they were acting. They were they were working ministry. They were preaching Jesus everywhere they went. <laughs> no matter what, no matter the trial, the tribulation, no matter what kind of trouble they got in or what kind of trouble they could have got in, they kept preaching. And yeah. people kept coming to Christ. <laughs> the word was they had to preach. That would they would miss the five thousand, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Glory to God. Uh -huh. So well, they kept. Really, they, go ahead. I was just gonna say they they kept working in spite of. Yeah. In spite of the uh, the uh, the the rulers and everybody, the people in authority, uh, they continued to preach. They went to jail. So, so what happened was that they, the only thing they put, could find and put them in jail because they was preaching the truth. That's right. <laughs> preaching the truth. Amen. Yeah. If uh, I go to jail for anything, it'd amen. be for telling, telling the truth, pre preaching the gospel. Okay, let's pick up in verse 10. Pick up verse 10. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him that this man stand here before you hold. Mm. <laughs> Amen. So in other words, the, rich, uh, the rulers, they uh, bring Peter and John before the ruling body and demand that they explain how they heal the lame man. They was they just want to know how to do it so they can do it. <laughs> Maybe that's, somebody, that's what they want to do. So sometimes people wonder, how can you pray for somebody and they be healed? How can you touch somebody and they be healed? Hey Amen. It's not you. It's what's inside of you. That what Peter and John already said. It's the power inside of, of them. Hey Amen. <laughs> that's right. And a lot of times people uh, are jealous. They mm -hmm. want to do what you do. Amen. But they got to do what you do. They got to yeah. lay out before the Lord. They got to fast and pray. They got to submit their and commit it's their suffering. lives it's some suffering. to the Lord. It's some That's right. Mm -hmm. Some suffering. That's right. And some sacrifice. That's right. Out by, some of the stuff come out by fasting what? And praying. That's so right. you got to be disciplined. This got to be disciplined. Yeah. Okay. Hallelujah. Verse 11 and 12. And then we're going to be through in a minute. I'm this like, is the stone yeah. which, set, which was set at naught of the builders, of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. I'm about to get into my message. Amen. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Okay. Amen. And, and come on. I, know, I see it on you. Come on. I see it on you. Amen. That's one of my favorite scriptures amen wonder why, there wonder, no I wonder, wonder, wonder why lord i got your favorite scriptures tonight <laughs> lord say i'm confirming that your spirit life. are like i'm confirming <laughs> that you are too connected amen. like peter and john but come on and tell us what you what you're feeling right now amen amen this is it says there is salvation in, in he he was declaring the gospel to these uh people he was declaring the gospel and that's what we have to do he was bold in his faith. That's what I like about them. They were bold in their faith. No matter what, they continued to be bold in their faith. Whether they, uh, 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 what the song say, if I die, let me die. They were willing to die for what they believe. They were willing to die in the name and for the name of Jesus. Amen. They were, they were uh, sold out yeah. to Christ. And that was their life purpose. 
That's so all. Had, that was so that they had no stronghold on them because no they knew who they were. <laughs> they That's knew who right. they was. And, it they said, and, it, and then so I could just hear, I could just hear, I could just hear him say, I just hear him say, uh, you crucified Jesus, but yeah. not the Romans. And say you crucified him, but God raised him from the dead. You That's crucified right. him. Jesus, the man you crucified, healed a man, healed a man, and, and, and what he's standing before you. You despised and rejected Jesus, but there is no true salvation in keeping the law. So in other words, you worried about the law. You need to be That's worried right. about the law. You need to be worried about the word of God. <laughs> Woo, Amen. Hallelujah. He said, the man you crucified, the Amen. man you despised and rejected, his name is Jesus. And he's Amen. the only one salvation and eternity with God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Girl, we having a good time on this line. <laughs> Amen. So Amen. What boldness that was. They didn't yeah. have a stronghold. So in other words, That's your right. stronghold, if you don't have a stronghold, you can have boldness. So now I'm not worried about my boldness because I don't have a stronghold on me anymore. So that's where That's that right. boldness come in because everybody can't preach with boldness. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Amen. Yes. You have to be yes. bold. You have to be bold. Amen. To tell the truth. They told the truth no matter what. And I, I can hear my pastor saying, I'm going to tell the truth if I have to run. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to tell the truth, whether it hurt feelings, whether you get mad at me, I'm going to tell the truth, whatever the, yeah. the, the Holy Spirit tell me to say, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to say what sometimes you Sometimes you, you uh, have to be, they, I say I'm a loner, but it's not I'm a loner. I tell you the truth. And I tell my, I tell the truth on my own self. I may be crazy, but the truth will not crazy. Or make you free. I can't have all that extra stuff that you got to worry about. Or you got to make up another life for this life. Tell the yeah. truth. And I remember what you said. You have to remember That's what right. you said. So That's let's go right. to Acts chapter one. Acts chapter one. Who wrote Acts chapter one? I'm just in Acts tonight. Verse eight. It says, I'm going to read that one. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit yes. is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me both in Jerusalem and into Judea, and in Samaria, and to the othermost part of the world, earth. That means the farthest, wherever. Yeah. It ain't no line, no matter where you go. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Mm. Amen. He gave us power. Amen. They received power. God has poured his spirit out yeah. on all flesh, and all he's yet flesh. pouring. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And, and so uh, people have a problem with women preaching yeah. but people ought to just be glad that people are preaching because a lot of people have went and sat down and are not preaching and some people who are some people are preaching and, and they're not telling the truth yeah. amen so the, the truth has to be told and god to use anybody he want right. to use to tell the mm -hmm. truth to spread right. the gospel that's right that's amen right. and he's looking for obedience and mm -hmm. so if you just be obedient mm -hmm. amen Amen. Amen. And you don't have to be a man to be obedient. Anybody can be obedient. Yeah. Yeah. And anybody can be a messenger. Okay. So, verse 13. I got verse 13 on here. 14 through 13 to 16. In Acts 1? Uh-huh. Go ahead. 13. 13 through 16. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of the, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zelotes, Zelotes, and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Mm -hmm. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of names together were about 120 mm -hmm. men and brethren. This scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was God to them that took Jesus. So other words, now, everybody don't believe in speaking in tongues. <laughs> um, 
But they said, I have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And I received power from my own high. Jesus worked through me to heal the sick, to give sight to the blind, and to heal the lame. And I, it said a power of how high lives in me, and I was from the high lives in me, and freely flows through me. So he said, now open your mouth and begin to speak in tongues. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. Hallelujah. So I had one more question. So you read through 16? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you think it would be any different today? Uh, for the Christian naysayers would be able to dispute the healing of one or your, their relatives? Like if someone healed someone in, in the service, what do you think they would say today? today? Well, like I hear a lot of uh, ministers uh, in healing services tell the people that are healed to go to the doctor and get a report mm -hmm. so that nobody can dispute that they were healed miraculously. Mm -hmm. and, but I think that people, you know, if people are 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 uh, atheist or, or against what well, enemies of the cross, as the Bible says, I think that they'll find any reason to dispute it, no matter what a doctor's report says. So mm -hmm. I, I think it, it will always be uh, the enemy. The devil will always raise up his head to try, try to dispute uh, Jesus Christ, to try to deter people from believing uh, and to try to win over other people uh, to keep them from believing. And I don't so know I when you when you put, when you bring out all everybody say I don't want the all it's not the all is <laughs> everybody wrong that see that all they do not want the all pulled on pulled on them and I know that I have prayed for people and they said well I gotten better but they were not like acknowledge that they was healed that's the part I had to have a problem with they they never acknowledged that they had been healed so if they not they giving the acknowledgement to the doctor is not to God. And they say, well, I had a, a, a soft spot in my head, but I went back to the doctor. He said he didn't see nothing. It must just some I had in my some. He just say he didn't know what it was. But that's God healed him, you know. So God, in other words, did you believe? Did you believe that you can be healed? Amen. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit really began a couple months ago. He really began to talk to me about healing because mm -hmm. I, I hear a whole lot of Christians talking about they sick. They got this going on and that going on. And Mm -hmm. That's not normal. Mm -hmm. uh, healing is the children's bread. And so okay. uh, the Bible tells us uh, that we can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just don't understand why a lot of people are not recovering. Okay. Amen. They pray. So you, so you think the leaders don't have the faith that they need to when they lay hands on them? Or they it don't believe possibly, that? It could, possibly believe, it could possibly be that. It could also be them. They just have not received healing. They keep they keep talking about it. it. Okay. They keep accepting it. They, I mean, so, well, they want to get the benefits from that. <laughs> right. Get the benefits from that. Amen. Right. Okay. And some people, uh, it's like a badge of honor. It's I don't know. It's just something that they hold up high. You know. Yeah. Some people like to be sick. Some people like the attention. Not everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about everybody. Now, some people. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I hear you. We're not supposed to be sick. Yeah, we're not to be. Because sometimes I, I lay hands on myself. And, yeah. and I have, I said, well, I can't heal myself. Why well, I can't, you know, I lay yeah. hands on myself, you know, and then I feel better. And I said, oh, I did. I do feel better. So <laughs> sometimes it's, I guess the Lord is showing me that you can lay hands and lay hands and you can recover. Holy Spirit work through your hands on yourself, just like He worked through your hands on other people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we talked about Peter and John tonight, and they stand firmly. They stood boldly, and they love and they love God. They got put in jail more than one time <laughs> because that mean they didn't have that nothing hold them back. Even when he's up in the upper room, did nothing hold them back. But we saw when they when they, when the Spirit of the Lord came. And, and, and Acts 1, when they was waiting on the power, everyone was there. And then he gets over to chapter 2, get over to chapter 2, 
and then something happened, chapter three, and then chapter four, we talked about the, the man, and then it just like you said, action, one and after another one, after another one, after another one. So we just, are you have anything else to say before we, we- uh, I was just gonna say that, that ministry was their life, just like it should be our lives. If okay. God called us, you know, it should be our life. Mm -hmm. And it should be above any other thing that we do. Mm -hmm. And that's why we study, because we value it over any other thing that we do. We have to study to show ourselves approved unto God. The Bible mm -hmm. said, well, we need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, just like these men in mm -hmm. Acts. I remember when I was younger, I well, get, I don't want King James. I want no version of the Bible. <laughs> so now you can't give me nothing but King James. I, and I love the Old Testament. I love history. I love, I the, love the Old, Old Testament. Testament. That's old and that's new. I said, well, you, got, you can't, you have to read the Old Testament to understand the New Testament. Yeah. So in other words, I love the Old Testament, but I love Acts. And I thank you for describing, yeah. I thank you for discussing this with me. We will come back in a couple of weeks and we'll do a uh, part two of this. So be ready. I don't know what the subject going to be. I but I thank you for being on here with me today. Thank you so much for having me. All right. So I'm going to let you pray us off. And uh... <laughs> okay. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this fellowship. Thank you, Lord, that we can come together and talk about your word. Mm -hmm. I love and I relish that. And Father, I just pray, Lord, that you will just bless this ministry. And what uh, uh, Pastor Jesse is doing, her book, Father, Every Endeavor, I pray, Lord, that you would bless it. Thank you, Lord, for connecting us, Father. And thank you, Lord, for the encouragement that she has been to me. And Father, I pray that she have a good night on tonight, that you would just continue to keep her. I pray, Lord, for her churches, Father, that you would bless her churches. I pray for the members, Lord, that you would continue to keep them, Lord, that they will live and not die in this, in this time of COVID, Father, that they will continue to live and be healthy and be protected, Father. I thank you, Lord, that no evil shall come nigh their dwelling. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. We thank you. Amen. We'll see you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.